Today's video was sent to me by Will Duffy of The Final Experiment. I'm Globy Glowtart Gloverton! Well, oh well, I love a challenge, so let's get on with this, shall we? Please subscribe. Now, I am so sick and tired of those conspiracy theorists. Yeah, you're not the only one, pal. And those pesky flat earthers. So, I want to prove gravity tonight to you. And I'm going to show you how water sticks to the outside of a spinning ball. <laughs> Don't bother, you just demonstrated gravity perfectly because if it weren't for gravity, those teeth wouldn't have known which direction to fall in. <laughs> I'm a graphic designer. I could be designing logos for huge corporations, but no, what am I doing? This. Now, in case you haven't already figured it out, Will found this video, or rather, I think he was tagged in this video by Mr. Globy McGlobetard Globa down here on his Facebook page. I know, I couldn't believe it either. A complete nutcase spreading misinformation on Facebook. That almost never happens. Okay, so, I'm going to conduct an experiment for you. Oh, I got my precious globe here. My precious, 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 precious globe. Is this considered funny in the flat earth community. I mean, it's perfectly on brand because his impression of a globe earther is more in keeping with a flat earther. But funny? No, not really, mate. Okay. All right. Let's get started creating gravity. Ah! Knock yourself out, pal. But before you go any further with your experiment, I feel it would be remiss of me not to point out to you that the ball you were using doesn't have a circumference of 24,901 miles, so it may not do what you expect it to. I would, this guy is unbearable, but don't worry, his video finishes really soon and we'll be looking at something else I found on his Facebook page then, and it's nowhere near as insane. It's just as insane as this one, but minus the annoying voice, the goofy teeth and the glasses. And before any of you say it, no, I wasn't just describing myself. My teeth aren't goofy. Earth big, basketball tiny. Like your brain. Now, gravity works on the world's oceans because the Earth has a massive gravitational pull due to its size and mass. A basketball, on the other hand, is much smaller and has a very weak gravitational pull. And when you spin a basketball, the centrifugal force caused by its rotation is much stronger than its tiny gravitational pull. So the water gets flung off instead of sticking to it. No! 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 Well, I don't know what that was all about. Maybe Will doesn't like me as much as I thought he did. Anyway, on to the next video. I'm going to show you that the large dome is in place and the small dome represents our vision of the sky. Uh, so I'm going to do it and show how the 24-hour sun in Antarctica is absolutely possible on the flat Earth. Ah! This should be good. Go on then, tell us all about your made-up fantasy space pizza. With the celestial dome and the way we view the sky as a concave sky. Uh, 
So here we go. Yeah, yeah, whatever. You'll be go a concave sky. What the hell are you talking about? I'm gonna be moving the the light around the top of the celestial dome, and it will follow uh, the path of the Tropic of Capricorn. Right. First of all, no. What the hell is the Celestial Dome? Is it that imaginary goldfish bowl that you lot think is over the Earth? And what you're going to see is in the glass dome, you're going to see the sun make a 24-hour circle in Antarctica below South America. Right, now I need to think about this very carefully and I need to give a calm, measured response. So to explain a 24-hour sun in Antarctica on a flat Earth, you first have to believe that there's a giant glass dome in case in the entire Earth. And isn't it handy that it's that exact bit of Antarctica, which is a ring around your flat Earth model, is going to be the bit that gets the 24-hour sun. But the thing is, it's not just a little part of Antarctica that gets a 24-hour sun in December. It's all of Antarctica, the entire continent. Uh, which is, I believe, where the final experiment is going to take place. So if they're far enough south, they could very possibly see a 24-hour sun, which does not refute the flat Earth. But that's exactly what it does. Even most flat Earthers agree that you can only have a 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Hang on a second. Most flat Earthers used to agree, until the final experiment was discussed, that you can only have a 24-hour sun in Antarctica on a globe-shaped Earth. So I can't wait to see how you're going to explain this away. Because we can absolutely demonstrate it right here live. So if I can demonstrate it live with the model and the map, then it's not a refutation of a flat Earth. It's possible on the flat Earth. Don't worry, I'll get it now. It's not a reputation of a flat earth. Did you mean to say it doesn't refute the flat earth? And all your little experiment is going to demonstrate is one, that you know how to point a torch at the Gleason's map, and two, that you have no concept of reality at all. I don't care whether it happens or not. If someone is telling you that it doesn't matter if there's a 24 hour sun in Antarctica, they are lying to you. Lying to you. Lying to you. Don't tell us. Jaronism isn't a real flat earther. Interesting. And it makes no difference whether it matters to you or not. The fact still remains that it is completely impossible for the sun to stay in the sky for 24 hours a day on a flat earth anywhere. I think it. we probably don't see a full 24 hour sun unless we go far enough south. And yeah, we, we probably would based off of these assumptions, which the flat earth makes these assumptions. There you go again. Assumptions. Now the globe model, or what we like to call reality, can predict that there will be a 24 hour sun in Antarctica in December. You just said it yourself. The flat earth model requires certain assumptions that there, oh. You're not a very good flat earther, are you? Now, whether people understood that or not, because they haven't dug deep enough, it doesn't matter. Why are so many flat earthers now saying that the 24 hour sun doesn't matter when they are all making videos about the 24 hour sun? I'm gonna zoom in now onto the small dome. And I'm gonna move the sun. See, look at that. See the sun inside that dome? I'm following the Tropic of Capricorn. Now this way, you're gonna get a lot more reflection because obviously it's not to scale and perfect here. No way, really? So what's this little dome about then? Are you trying to say that there's a big dome covering the earth and a teeny weeny little one covering Antarctica to conveniently make the sun stay up for 24 hours on a flat earth. Because it's easier to say it does work on a flat earth than try to debunk it and prove it works on a flat earth. But you can see how the sun is perfectly mimicked by the concave view that we view the sky with. 
I promise you, I'm really trying my best to understand what the hell this guy is talking about, but I'm failing. So he's claiming that the sky is concaved. And we'll completely ignore the fact that the sky isn't a physical object anyway, because I'm more interested in how the hell the sky being concaved would help the sun stay in the sky for 24 hours a day on a flat Earth. Because of the celestial dome and the way we view the sky, you could very possibly get a 24-hour sun circling the horizon in Antarctica. It's not impossible on a flat earth. I've just proven it's not impossible. No, you haven't. All you've proven is that you're a complete moron who will believe anything in a YouTube video as long as it already fits in with what he believes. So the final experiment, which is not an experiment, it's an observation. An observation is a crucial part of an experiment and without an observation, an experiment isn't an experiment at all. And you're only saying it because you're a brainless idiot who's heard other flat earthers saying it and they are only saying it because they've heard the high priest of the flat earth, Eric Dubay, say it. That has set out to debunk flat earth with this 24 hour sun observation has already failed. Okay, so let me ask you this then, Mr. Flat Earth Genius. Why is it that there are so many videos on YouTube of other flat earthers trying to debunk the 24 hour sun in Antarctica? Because if it was possible on a flat earth, you wouldn't have been trying to debunk it anyway. You'd have been trying to do what you think you've just done and prove that it still works even on a flat earth. Before it even starts, it's already failed because we can clearly demonstrate how it happens. So whether it happens or not, I'm actually excited to see whether it happens or not. So more power to them for going, but it's not proof that we live on a globe. All the evidence points to we live on a flat surface. Thanks for watching, everybody. Love you. Bye.